Hey everyone! Oh no, I messed up my green screen. Uh, rats. I didn't double check. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Oh, I rebooted my machine. There we go. Okay, so my camera settings weren't correct. Okay, cool. Nothing to see here. Uh, Alright, so today I thought I would show you um, uh, comparing a filter plus map and how that compares with reduce. Uh, and maybe we'll even see like a regular for loop or something um, as well. So um, yeah, what we're going to do is we've got this list of animals that I just threw together really quick. And um, it has a name, no, the number of legs, and whether or not it's a mammal. And so what I'm going to do is I'll just add a console log here. I'm using Kuoka. Um, it's a, an extension. Please don't ask me in the comments what this is is because every time it says it right there but people are going to ask me um so it's quokka go look it up um okay so we're going to say animals dot filter so we only want the mammals so we'll say a a dot mammal okay so now we just have the mammals but then we only want um let's see we'll just uppercase their name so then we'll map the Remaining animals a dot name dot to upper case and sweet now we've got dog dolphin eagle elephant robin and cat sweet awesome right okay so let's look at what we could do uh, one of the things that I actually like about this is that we can format it nicely like this uh, where it's like yeah oh, let's filter all these things then we'll map them um, so whoops I just realized you could see like one of my clamp things. Um, okay, so let's try this out with reduce. I'm gonna say animals dot reduce, and uh, reduce the reducer function accepts an accumulator. I just say acc accumulator. So it's what the object or the the thing that is being accumulated into, uh, or or the like ultimate thing that you're going to return. Uh, technically, it's the thing that you returned last uh, from the last time the reducer function was called. Um, but typically, it's uh, used as a kind of an accumulator value. You're reducing this big array into smaller things. So then we're going to take an animal and um, we're going to say if a dot mammal, whoops, uh, mammal, spelled that wrong the first time. Um, then we're going to um say accumulator dot push a dot to uppercase and uh and then we'll return either way the accumulator but we need to initialize this accumulator um, so if you don't provide a second argument to array dot reduce you're going to um your um the first time your reducer function is called the accumulator will be set to the first element of the array that you're reducing um, and that works great if you're doing um, like taking a, a bunch of numbers and adding them all together or something um, where the first one, you know, it's that number plus zero is going to be, you know, whatever. So uh, that would work fine. But um, in our case, we want to have an array that we're accumulating everything into. And so we're going to start out with an empty array. Uh, so we provide that as our uh, first thing. And then we also are going to need a dot name. There we go. So those are the same. Um, now looking at the two of those, one of those looks a lot more clear than the other. Um, and if you're thinking of something else, no, it's actually this one. This one's much more clear. You say, hey, animals, I'm going to filter it down to just the ones that have this. Uh, whereas here we have some more imperative looking code where, um, yeah, we have this if statement here. I kind of like this. It's uh, This is... Um, I think this is technically point free here. I don't know. I don't know. What is point free? Do do bow, bow, bow. point free. Point free. Oh, there's a whole video thing. Passive programming. Okay, where they don't I um let's see. Functions uh, function definitions do not identify the arguments or points on which they are um operate. Um so that, yeah, this is all confusing to me. Um, but anyway, it, uh, it, um, I, I think it's a lot easier to read um, 
this stuff than this reducer. Now let's take a, a look at another example um, where a reducer does make a lot of sense. Um, so what if we did an array of numbers is one, two, three, four, five. And then we wanted to um, reduce this to the sum of those numbers, add all those numbers together. We can't really, in that scenario, we can't actually use a filter or map to do that because we need to take all those numbers and add them together. So uh, one, one thing that we could do is we could say let sum equal zero, and then we'll say uh, for um, num in uh, numbers, and then we can say sum plus equals element. I'll just make this a little bit easier. Bink. And then we can console log the sum, ta -da, and it's 15. Uh, so that's one way we could do it, but I actually really pretty much never use for loops. Um, yeah, and uh, actually I'll talk about the, the reason you might here in a second, but uh, let's try this another way. We're gonna console log, we'll say numbers reduce, and this is gonna take our accumulator, we can call it sum, and then we can take um, the number and we'll say sum plus number is a thing that we're gonna return. And we get our, our answer here. And that's because we're accumulating all these things into our, um, into our sum. And so what's, what's happening here is because I'm not providing a second argument to this reduce call, the first time the reduce is gonna be called, it, um, it's going to be called with this as our accumulator. And then we're gonna add those two together. If I wanted to avoid that or like here's, um, yeah, yeah. And so if, if, um, numbers was dynamic or something and it could be an empty array, then, um, it's a good idea to provide, uh, an initial value. Um, uh, because if you try to reduce on an array with no items, then, um, it blows up. So, um, we can just provide zero and then we won't have any trouble. Just like that. So that's neat. Uh, so that's that's a case where I think reduce makes a whole lot of sense. So when, when you're actually taking an array, array and reducing it into a, a, a single value, um, then I think reduce, well, when you're taking an array and um, reducing it to something that's not an array, I guess, um, of mappings of those values, that's when I think reduce makes a lot of sense. But if you're doing something um, where you say, I want to take every element of this array and do the same thing to them, um, and then maybe filter some of these things out. Um, that's when I think I'd prefer a filter and a map over reduce. Um, and yeah, and generally I'd prefer uh, using reduce over a, a, um, a for loop. One case where a uh, for loop might actually be better is um, like from a performance perspective in some cases, uh, because you can do break. Um, oh, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, this is almost sort of important. I'll be right back. This will be quick.
That's the trouble with live streaming is you never know when the important calls are going to come. Um, okay, glad that I did that. Sorry that I made you wait. So uh, yeah, so you have the ability to break in a for loop, uh, which you cannot do in a reduce. So um, the value of that would be is like you get partway through the array and you're like, oh, I don't need to keep going. Um, um, and then there, like you can actually also do this continue thing, um, which will allow you to skip the rest of um, the code that's in the for loop and just uh, go on to the next thing. So if, um, presumably like maybe this is an expensive operation and you decide, oh, I don't need to do it for this one um, for one reason or another, then you can, uh, you can skip that expensive operation. So lots of the reason that you might use a for loop is uh, for performance uh, reasons. Another thing is it, it's uh, just a tad bit more flexible. There was an example I was thinking of and and I forgot it now, but like if we wanted to do that that same thing here where we um, exit early, then we'd say um, if, um, I don't know, sum is greater than two, um, then we'll return the sum. Otherwise, we'll add them together, something like that, right? So this allows us to exit early, but um, only sort of. And um, yeah, and then it actually, it is still going to call all of the functions uh, or like call for every time. So like I said, it's mostly for performance, but most of the work that I do, actually performance doesn't matter all that much. So um, like at least this level of performance doesn't matter all that much. Like um, this is not my bottleneck is what I'm saying. So um, yeah, so anyway, uh, I think it's a good, good idea to understand how filter, map, and reduce, and for loops all work so that when you're presented with a problem, you can um, kind of decide what makes the most sense for uh, those different use cases. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is um, like maybe we we do need to reduce like let's let's add up the legs so instead of um, instead of just mapping um, all of these to be the capitals of the mammals let's say we want to add the legs of the mammals okay so you can't do that um, with ma uh, filter and map you're going to need to use reduce or um, a for loop. And so what we can do here is we'll say, uh, we're gonna reduce this to a number. I'm gonna start it as zero. And instead of accumulator push, we're going to return accumulator plus a dot legs. Um, otherwise we'll return the accumulator. So then we got 16. Um, so that's still, I'm not like super duper happy with that. So what we can do um, is I can say reduce and now I don't have to do this filtering because I've already done the filtering. And so I can say, um, total legs is my accumulator, my animal, and then I say a dot legs, legs plus total legs, and we'll start with zero. Uh, you notice it says like weird number, object, object. That's because this reduce, if I don't provide an initial value as the second argument, then reduce is going to use the first element of the array. And so that total legs is gonna be um, this object here. So when we say a, plus, a dot legs plus the total legs, it's gonna two string both of them and we wind up with zero and object object. Um, and that's and then it turns into a string and now we're concatenating instead. So you're normally you're gonna want to provide an initial value and we'll provide it as zero. Um, and then it'll call it with each element of the array um, of the remaining array and we get 16. So um, even combining filter and reduce together, totally a cool thing to do. Um, I, I think it makes my reducer a little bit simpler. Um, and so I'll, I'll do that sometimes too. Some people will look at you funny when, when you do that. They're like, don't you know that reduce can do this stuff? And you're like, no, no, no. I mean, look at these two. One of them is a lot simpler than the other, I think. So anyway, um, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to jump out. I hope that was interesting and fun. Sorry for the little break in the middle. Um, that's what happens when you live stream. I'll see you all later. Bye.